ほらルフィ今一緒に海賊になる仲間を探してるんだ
Izumi had tears in eyes as she remembered those exact words that was the last word she had said to her brother before she ever saw him alive again. I'm highly disappointed I could expected more from the daughters of famous number one hero All Might. Instead I got a whimpering bitch who couldn't do anything more other than crying. You're a disappointment. A disgrace Tobai whispered to her as he grabbed Izumi by her hair Hey do me a favor would you? How about you kill yourself and ask for forgiveness in the afterlife? After all that's what you want right? Forgiveness for your brother. Tobai said as Izumi's eyes widened at those words, how did he found out the last words I said to Izuku before he's deaf? She thought as her mind struggled to comprehend what was happening plus the blood lost she was having made it even harder for her to think. Izumi just kneeled in the ground silently crying as she felt an emotion that she hasn't felt in a long time, anger, anger for herself. Anger for what she did, anger for this man to bring up her brother, she felt something bubbling inside her that she hasn't felt in a long time. She felt the anger, the rage as her eyes turned red with slits on them, her fingernails become sharper, her teeth now showed fangs as three deep thick whisker like marks appeared on each of her cheeks as a red aura began to whirl around her spinning wildly as her the red aura taking the form of a fox's head bearing its fangs as smoke started to emit from her stomach healing the wound as she looked up at Tobai, her eyes showing nothing but pure unbridled rage in them as she roared before she rushed towards him. Uncount. A massive creature opened its eyes revealing red eyes with black slits on them as the creature smirked in amusement showing it large bearing teeth that can devour you with in a second. Finally the creature said as it got up in all fours after all these years locking me away refusing to use my power. You finally wanted to use my power huh? The creature smirked well then if want my power then have all of it. The creature roared its nine tails waging wildly as if they had a mind of its own as a red aura starts to emit from him and began to cover the place. With Izumi. I'll kill you, Izumi said showing her now fanged teeth and deep red eyes with slits on them. Tobai began to back away intrigued as he thought, so this is the power of the nine tails hut Tobai smirked beneath his mask, it's truly is fascinating. Izumi roared as she rushed towards Tobai with nothing but the intent to kill. With All Might, have no fear students, All Might said as his usual smile was now gone replaced by a frown for I am here. All Might threw his yellow jacket to the side as he eyed the now terrified villains before looking at the injured Aizawa then at Shigaraki and the Namu. Holy crap, it's All Might I've never seen the guy in person before a villain said in a terrified tone. I didn't expect him to be so huge another one said as he stared at all might in fear. This is no time to talk you idiots if we strike him now we can Kai he was cut off as a blur knock him out before he can even react. A blur suddenly began knocking out the villains left and right only leaving the now unconscious bodies of the villains as all might had Aizawa in his arms. All might be careful he's strong Aizawa muttered weakly before passing out. I'm sorry Aizawa, I should have been here sooner All Might said sadly after looking at the unconscious Aizawa state before turning at Shigaraki his eyes turning murderous. All Might suddenly rushed at him, but the Namu acting upon its instinct balked the attack with its body, although not before All Might send a shock wave startling Shigaraki and knocking his hand like mask to the ground. No 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 Shigaraki started to mutter to himself, a he put his hands on his face covering it as he walked to where his hand like mask had fallen off, it wasn't supposed to go this way, he's still fast. Shigaraki pick up the hand from the ground father. Somehow he managed to hit me Shigaraki said as he put the hand like mask on his face. Of course a government hero relies on violence Shigaraki said as he look at All Might, I wasn't prepared I couldn't even see him when he moved but he's not as fast as I thought he would be, not as fast as he used to be I guess it's true after all Shigaraki said as he smiled sinisterly towards All Might, All Might really is getting weaker. All Might turned to Shigaraki with his signature smile before rushing at him his hands in a crossing motion. Carolina smash, All Might said as he crossed his arms in a scissor motion at Shigaraki but was blocked the Namu as a shockwave was heard. Guess Aizawa wasn't lying when he said that you were strong. 
All Might said as the Namu tried to grab him only for All Might to tilt his back dodging the attack before punching the Namu in the gut which didn't phase. Take this. All Might punched the Namu in the face as the Namu roared and tried to grab All Might once again only for All Might to jump backwards. Doesn't even matter where I punch you does it. All Might said as landed and punched the Namu once again who was rushing at him. That because Namu here has shock absorption All Might Shigaraki said as he watch All Might punch the Namu again and again the only way you're going to hurt him is to slowly gouge out its flesh, but of course I don't think it'll just sit back and let you do that. Looks like you finally met your match Shigaraki said as he smirked beneath his hand like mask as All Might dodge another punch from the Namu. Thanks for telling me how to beat it. All Might said as he grabbed the Namu by the back of his waist and lift him up now all I have to do is wear him down then it's on to you. He said as he slammed the Namu to the ground by its head performing a suplex creating a crater and shockwave in the process. Shigaraki put his arm around his face as a gust of wind flew everywhere scattering the rest of the villains. In the entrance of the Usti, the students watch in shock as such power as they cheered All Might on. Or take that bird brain, Sato cheered as he watched the fight that's what you villains get for underestimating All Might. Yeah kick his ass All Might Siro said as he cheered followed by the others as they cheered All Might on. Guys I'll try to look around to find our classmate Shoji said as he ran off to look for the others as the rest of the class nodded. With All Might. All Might grunted in pain as the Namu grabbed him by his weak spot thanks to Kirijiri using his quirk to intervene. Oh come on what kind of cheap move was that? All Might said as he grunted in pain as blood started to leak from his wound as the students watch on in shock. Nice you were trying to bury him in the concrete so he couldn't move around anymore, but sorry that wouldn't work Namu is as strong as you are that won't stop him Shigaraki said as he began to chuckle madly. Nice work Kirijiri Shigaraki said as he looked towards Kirijiri, we've got him just where we want him now. All Might grunted in pain as he gritted his teeth as the Namu tightened its grip on his weak spot. This monster found out about my weak spot All Might thought as he let go of the Namu's waist and trying to break free from its iron grip arg, gotta stop him despite his power. If this is your best then you pick the wrong place to attack you should just give up now, All Might said as he looked at the two villains. Shigaraki scratched his neck in annoyance Kirijiri Shigaraki instructed as Kirijiri nodded. Normally I wouldn't want blood and viscera flooding the inside of my warp gates, but I'll make an exception just for a great hero like you Kirijiri said as he tightened his quirks hold around All Might making him grunt in pain since you're too fast to see in the human, I Nelmu had to restrain you, and once it's pulled your body halfway through I'll squeeze the cage shut. I'm going to enjoy tearing you to pieces, Kirijiri said as he prepared to tear All Might in half. Ruin Zone Explosion can be heard inside a building as Bakugo and Kirishima were fighting the villains off. Say goodbye, Bakugo yelled as he exploded another villain away crashing them into the wall. Kirishima blocked a sword strike from a villain who had a sword in his hands as Kirishima karate chop him in the neck knocking him out. Think that's the last of these guys, what a bunch of weaklings Bakugo said as Kirishima turned towards him. All right, let's hurry up and find the rest of our classmates if we're still in the ASG. Then everyone else is probably too, and all of them have the offensive skills we do Kirishima size as he held up his fist. We gotta make sure that they're safe especially since we screwed things up when we got in the way earlier Kirishima said as Bakugo turned towards him if 13 had been able to suck up that villain. Then we never would have been separated like that we have to make it up to the others Kirishima said as he look at Bakugo. If you want to track everyone down then go ahead and have fun. But I'm gonna destroy that stupid extra Bakugo said with a scowl on his face. Hurt that guy? Come on don't be an idiot man Kirishima said as Bakugo turned to him furiously. Shut up. I'm gonna take him down cause he's their way in and out. Bakugo yelled as unknowingly a camouflage villain was trying to sneak up to them seeing an opportunity when they're arguing with each other, if I cut off their escape route they'll be stuck here and have to pay for what they've done. We'll just have to figure it out. 
I hope you've had your fun chit-chatting to bad you let your guard down the villain thought with a smirk as he tried to sneak up to the preparing his blade only for Bakugo to grab him by the his face and explode at him. Anyway Bakugo said as he calmed down before lifting up the unconscious head of the chameleon-like villain. If all these villains are small fires like these guys worth then our classmates can handle them. That reaction time was insane Kirishima said in awe also since when did you act so calm and rational, usually you're all like die, 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 Kirishima said as he imagined an image of Bakugo yelling at them with his furious look in his head. I'm always calm and rational you red-haired loser, Bakugo furiously yelled at him. Hey, yeah there you are Kirishima said as Bakugo turned to his usual self. Bakugo scoff before turning away go find the others, if you want to he said as he started to walk away. Wait hold up Kirishima said stopping Bakugo from walking out, I think you're really saying that you believe in our classmates Kirishima said as he heroned his fist and clashing them with each other creating sparks in the process and that's thinking like a man Bakugo. Configuration Zone Damn it, he's too fast the villain said as he looked around to find his target as the villains spread around to find him. A villain was running but was suddenly knocked to the ground by Oijiro who was hanging upside down by his tail. I see him, he's up there a villain pointed towards Ojiro. Let's get him, another villain pointed out. Ojiro landed on the ground as he felt lava started to well up his throat before spitting globs of lava balls towards the villains knocking them out before jumping away propelling himself with his tail. I have to help the others Ojiro thought as he jumped from building to building with the help of his tail. Downpour Zone We found you. A villain said as he looked at the terrified Koda as he rushed at him, the others joining him only for a massive shadowy hand to smack them away from Koda and into the wall. That's six of them down Taokoyami said as Dark Shadow was watching for any more villains were reducing their numbers but very soon were going to get exhausted and eventually overwhelmed. With Izumi. Izumi was rushing towards Tobai wildly. She was running on all fours with a red fox-like cloak with one tail surrounded her as her appearance became feral. I'll kill you, Izumi yelled as she rushed at Tobai and tried to swipe her now sharp nails at his throat only for it to phase right through. Tobai phase right through the attack as he looks towards Izumi with the one tail cloak on her with her feral look. My, my looks like I was right you really are a monster Tobai said as Izumi growled at him. Well if you want serious then let's get serious shall we Tobai said as he went into some hand signs fire style, fireball jutsu, Tobai said as he spit a massive fireball in his mouth. Izumi jumps upwards to avoid the massive fireball as she once again rushes at Tobai. Suddenly a giant dark red rib cage with skeleton hands appeared on Tobai surrounding him as the giant skeleton hands slap, the rushing Izumi sending her flying. But before Izumi could crash into the wall, Tobai suddenly blurred towards her back and kick her hard into the sky. Tobai suddenly appeared into the sky on Izumi's back and dropped kick her into the ground hard, causing a large crater to form and smoke start to emit from it. Even with the power of a tailed beast, you're still no match against me, how disappointing Tobai said in a disappointed tone. Izumi's expression grew furious as she rushed at Tobai again with a new fury causing Tobai to smirk to himself. Meanwhile, the others watched the battle in shock. What going on with Yagi Mainta asked terrified. What the hell I thought his quirk was phasing Kaminari asked in shock. This is unexpected Kiro Tsuyu said as she watched the fight. We need to do something Jiro said as she looked towards Momo for a plan. Momo on the other hand narrowed her eyes at Izumi, she hasn't seen her use that quirk since Izuku's death. She would give Izuku scratches all over his body when she sensed that quirk, Momo gritted he teeth as she remembered Izuku's body who was covered in burn marks and finger scratches thanks to Bakugo and Izumi using their quirks on him. Momo turned toward Gyro, but before they can react a swirling vortex opened up sucking Tsuyu inside. Asui! They shouted in shock as they watched their friend disappear by a swirling vortex.
Izumi rushed towards Tobai as she clenched her fist ready to kill him as Tobai just held up his hand and swirling vortex appeared and came out Suyu as Izumi's eyes widened as she couldn't stop herself in time. Come on Izumi do it Tobai thought as he smirked beneath his mask as he held Tsuyu by the neck as Izumi eyes widen as her fist was cocked back aiming for the heart as she about to kill her as she knew she couldn't stop herself in time due to the tunnel vision she was having why don't you kill another one of your love ones you seemed pretty good at doing that Tobai thought as he watched Izumi about to kill her friend. Yagi stop. The others yelled desperately trying to stop Izumi from killing her as they rushed toward her, but they all know that they couldn't make it in time. Izumi was about to tore her fist right into Tsuyu's heart as Tsuyu closed her eyes waiting for the pain as Izumi stopped her fist inches away from ripping Tsuyu's heart out of her body as she was breathing heavily. She was panting from exhaustion as the cloak disappeared and an image of her brother flashed from her mind. Izumi please Izuki begged as he put his arms around him to protect his face Izumi only smiled evilly at him come on Deku fight back you useless coward. She said as she had her red fox cloak activated on and scratch Izuku by his arm as Izuku screamed in pain. Izumi slowly let her fist fall down with tears in her eyes as she remembered that certain memory it was the reason why she would never use this quirk in the first place all it could do is harm people. She hurt her brother because of this quirk. How disappointing and here I thought you liked killing your friends Tobai said as he kicked Tsuyu from him and towards Izumi who luckily caught her just in time after all isn't that what you did to your brother. Suddenly a ball of lava and a tentacle flew towards Tobai to hit him but phased right through him as Ajiro and Shoji suddenly arrived. Tobai's eyes widened as he felt large amount of chakra, it wasn't as large as Izumi, but the other one was close this chakra, it can't be Madara thought as he smirked to himself. Yagi, Asui, Ojiro yelled out worriedly. You guys okay? Shoji asked them. Whoa where did you guys came from? Kaminari asked in a shocked tone seeing them here. I was looking around for the rest of our classmate when I ran into a Jiro who was doing the same, we heard screaming here and decided to check it out Shoji said as he helped Izumi and Suyu into their feet. I see I thank you for coming we could use your help on this guy Momo said as she nodded gratefully before turning his attention towards Tobai. Ah, if it isn't my lucky day the four, the eight, and the nine all in one place, in one class no less it looks like the fates are smiling at me today Tobai said, as he looked towards Ajiro, Shoji and Izumi well looks like the fun's over I just came here to test the waters you could say, but I am severely disappointed in UA for their students lackluster performance, I do hope you can get stronger the next time we meet after all I like to have a good dance myself. Well it looks like we just have to continue this some other time Tobai said. You're not going anywhere, Gyro yelled as she activated her eyes, the other following her example preparing for a fight. Ah the infamous Byakugan Tobai said, as he looked towards Gyro the Dujutsu of the once and powerful Hyuga clan, I thought you were all extinct, then again I thought I was the only one of my clan to survive well, until I found him Tobai said with a smirk behind his orange spiral mask. Clan? What clan? Izumi asked him confused. My, my you don't even know your own ancestors? What a disgrace Tobai said as he looked at Izumi with disgust. I'm talking about the most powerful clan of course my clan, the Uchiha clan Tobai said as he moved his orange spiral mask for a bit so they can see his eyes as he activated them. We will meet again soon. But when we do, I hope you get stronger and give me a good dance until then. Tobai suddenly put his hand down from his face to his body until disappeared completely without a trace. What the hell? Where did he go? Kaminari asked as he looked around for any sign of him. Uchiha clan? Where have I heard that name before? Gyro muttered as she tried to remember the Uchiha name and the those weird looking eyes. That's not important right now we need to help the other Momo said as she snapped them out of their thoughts. The others nodded as they quickly left the mountain zone and towards Central Plaza. With all might, normally I wouldn't want blood and viscera flooding the inside of my warp gates, 
but I'll make an exception just for a great hero like you Kirijiri said as he tightened his quirks hold around All Might making him grunt in pain since you're too fast to see in the human, Ainamu had to restrain you, and once it's pulled your body halfway through I'll squeeze the cage shut. I'm going to enjoy tearing you to pieces, Kirijiri said as he prepared to tear All Might in half. Izumi, Momo, and the others arrived in the central plaza to see All Might trap in the mist villain's quirk and was about to be cut in half. All Might Izumi shouted as she watched her father about to be cut in half. All Might gritted his teeth in pain as a memory of his son flashed in his mind. All Might, Izuku stammered as he looked towards his hero in awe. Aha, have no fear young man I'm always happy to meet a fan. He said as he smiled towards Izuku who had stars in his eyes in awe, he stumbly grabbed his notebook from his backpack and held it on to All Might. All Might can you sign this please Izuku held up the notebook along with a pen towards All Might for him to sign it. Ha ha of course young? All Might asked as he took the notebook from the boy. Ah uh, Izuku Yagi Izuku said as he blushed in embarrassment by his her asking him about his name. Ah young Yagi here I already signed it, All Might said as he handed Izuku back high notebook. Izuku looked at the notebook in awe like it was the most precious thing in the world as Izuku bowed repeatedly as a sign of gratitude. Now then, I must get going, and I appreciate your support, he said as he tried to jump away only to be stopped by Izuku. Wait, already? I have a question for you, he said nervously as he grabbed hold of All Might's shirt. Haha, ha, I'm sorry young man, but I'm hero duty is really quite busy All Might said as Izuku just tightened his hold on his shirt. Please? Izuku pleaded desperately please why your M, my only hope left Izuku thought while closing his eyes trying to stop the tears from leaking clutching his uniform that has so many burns and dust on them. All right then ask away, All Might sighed as he finally relented. Can I be a hero without a quirk? He said Shakari as he looked towards the ground and waited for his idol for answer, unknowingly this decision would make him lose his son forever. Sorry young man, but I can't simply say that you can be a hero without a quirk All Might said sadly, I'm sorry Izuku, but this is the only way for you to be safe. All Might then put a hand on Izuku's shoulder while he wiped the blood on his mouth. Shit, I'm at my limit, you need to get out of here fast. All Might thought as he looked down towards Izuku, you can still be a hero by applying as a cop or a doctor young man. He started to walk away, but stop as he turned to the now sobbing Izuku. It's not bad to have a dream, but that is how the truth speak, try being realistic young man, I'm sorry, he said. Now I must get going, he said as he jumped away leaving the poor sobbing boy alone. Why? Just why did I neglect my own son? He was quirkless like me before. But why did I despise him? How can I call myself a symbol of peace? I am sorry. I'm really sorry. I failed you. I failed you all. Izumi, I'm a horrible father. Inko, I'm sorry for not saving you back then. Izuku, I'm sorry for everything. Everything. Kirijiri was about to split him in half when All Might started to struggle trying to break free. Ah, All Might yelled in frustration as he struggled to break free from Kirijiri's grip and trying to push the Namu off his back, I can't die yet. I still want to redeem myself for Izuku. All Might, you can do it. Izumi yelled as the others started to cheer him on. You can do it, All Might Kamairi said as he cheered All Might on. Izumi, he thought as a smile forms in his face as he tried even harder. Ha ha ha, how's that for the symbol of peace? Shigraki said as he laughed manically. I, I will not fall, why? Because I am here, and because I still want to save people, and tell the world that they too can be heroes quirkless or not. He yelled as he struggled even harder his muscles bulging ripping his shirt. Izumi's eyes widened her eyes with tears rolling on her cheek, Momo narrowed her eyes on the other hand was suspecting something, but she can't quite sure where to put it. Admirable well, then let's break that spirit of yours, shall we? Shigaraki said as he rushed towards Izumi as her eyes widened. Yagi? The rest of the class yelled as they realized what was about to happen as Shigaraki's hands were about to touch Izumi's head. 
no, All Might shouted for his daughter to get away. She closed her eyes while she gritted her teeth as she waited for something to happen while tears was rolling down her eyes. I'm sorry Ani-chan. Omoto, what are you doing? A four-year-old Izuku said shakily while Izumi and Bakugo stood in front of him with smirks on their faces. Don't call me Omoto, you useless Deku. She growled at him before she punched him hard in the stomach making him stumble to the ground. Heh, what are you gonna do Deku? A quirkless loser like you can't do anything Bakugo said while making small explosions in the palm of his hands. And yet, you're still trying to be a hero? No one can do that, Izumi said as she cracked her nucleus her appearance becoming feral while a red cloak like Aura was surrounding her. But I can still try, Izuku said in a raspy voice as tears was in his eyes as he weakly stood up. You can't beat Deku and yet you're still trying to fight us? Bakugo said as he gritted his teeth. Please I just want to be a- He was cut off as Izumi punched him in the face hard. Shigaraki was about to touch her head, but his hand was blocked by an ice wall while an explosion hit Shigaraki making him jump away as Bakugo, Kirishima, Todoroki, Yuraraka and Toru had arrived to the central plaza. Yagi, are you okay? Todoroki asked her as Yuraraka and Toru helped her get up. Izumi nodded as they sighed in relief. All Might turned towards the villains with a furious look on his face. Now to deal with you. All Might said as he cocked his fist channeling the power of one for all in his right arm, I will save people and I will bring hope out there to the Quiriclis and those who had weak or villainous Quiriks, but in order to do that I must defeat you first, cause just like my motto, go beyond and... All Might exclaimed. Plus Ultra. He and the student yelled together as he finally broke free from Kirijiri's grip and breaking into the Namu's hand as he punched it. One for all one million percent. All Might yelled as he punched the Namu directly with a one million percent punch, sending it flying away to the sky breaking the roof of the Usch in the process as everything started to shake due to the amount of power All Might was releasing. That was like the finishing moved in a video game Kirishima said as he looked at the hole in the roof in awe he beat the shock absorption right out of him. Ever never seen that kind of brute strength he said as his eyes widen in awe. Imagine having power like that Bakugo said in awe seeing his hero in action he must have been punching that monster so fast it couldn't regenerate. I really have gotten weaker. Amit said as the smoke started to clear showing All Might as he panted a bit back in my heyday 5 his would have been enough to knock that guy out, he said as he put his fist in his chest. But today it took more than 300 mighty blows, he said as smoke tarted to emit from him time's up gotta end this fast All Might thought as he looked towards Shigaraki and Kurajiri. You've been bested villains. He said as Shigaraki started to shake in anger surrender, we all want to get this over with quickly. And no no. Master said that you were getting weak Shigaraki yelled as he scratched his neck furiously as he glared at the panting All Might and look what he did to my Namu. Master? All Might thought as he is panting heavily as he weakly stood up. His cheating, his clearly cheating. Shigaraki yelled as he pointed at All Might accusingly. Young master we need to leave, Kirijiri said as he readied his quirk. No, this is unfair, he was supposed to be weak, he's clearly cheating. He yelled again and stomping his foot like a four-year-old. Shigaraki rushed towards All Might to kill him, but was cut off by a gunshot as he was shot in the legs by Snipe as Kirijiri uses his mist to shield Shigaraki as they all turned towards the gates of the Usti to see Ida and the rest teachers of Yua along with the principal. Classmates, I have brought reinforcement. Ida yelled as the rest of the class looked at the heroes as they sighed in relief with a happy smiles on their faces. The principal then who was in Vlad's shoulder spoke, is there any injured students? Are the rest of the students okay? The principal asked. Thirteen sensei and Aizawa sensei are injured, but I'm not sure about the others Momo replied as she looked to her classmate to see if they had any kind of injury. Present Mike went forward as he took a deep breath before yelling yeah as the villains covered their eyes to stop the deafening noise as some of them dropped to their knees in pain. Now get them. 
The principal instructed our priority is to protect all of our students, he said as he pointed at the remaining villains as the teachers nodded in understanding. Yes, sir, the teachers said as the rest of the heroes followed the principal's instruction as they began to fight the remaining villains off. The pros are here, it's game over for real. Let's go home, Kirijiri Shigaraki said. Thirteen uses her quirk on Kirijiri as he struggled not to get sucked in by the black hole. Shigaraki, let's go, Kirijiri said as he struggled not to get sucked in the black hole. Shigaraki growled, all right, fine, let's go, but remember this, heroes, we will come back. Shigaraki said as Kirijiri activated his quirk, making them disappear in a warp gate. All Might dropped into his knees as he was breathing slowly as smoke started to emit from him covering the place. All Might! Izumi yelled as she ran towards her father as she looked towards him to see half of his face was his usual skinny form and the other was his muscle form. Izumi, I'm proud of you, All Might said as he smiled towards his daughter. You have fought down the villains with a brave determination and kept your classmates safe. They would be proud of you, he said as Izumi had tears on her eyes as she smiled at her father. Thank you, Dad, Izumi said as she wiped the tears away from her eyes. Izumi? Bakugo yelled as he ran towards her but was blocked by Cementos to protect All Might and Izumi's identity. I think it is best for you to join the others so you can get check for any injuries Mr. B Bakugo Semitas said as Bakugo looked at him angrily. The hell I am, I'm fine, I want to know if Izumi's okay or not, Bakugo yelled furiously. I assure you that Miss Yagi is quite okay, now join the others and get yourself check out for any injuries Semitas said as Bakugo growled at him before walking away reluctantly. The rest of the teachers started to gather the students and pick up some thugs while an ambulance was called as Aizawa and 13 was put onto a stretcher to take them in the nearest hospital and some of them attended to the students to see if they had any injuries mental or physical trauma. Madara was watching as he was hidden in the shadow near a building looking down at the pro heroes and students as he was watching some of the teachers arrested the villains while the others were interrogating the students. Looks like your little pet project failed all for one how disappointing I would expected more from the boogeyman of the criminal underworld Madara said as he looked down at the teacher and students. Oh well, this is just to test the waters so to speak the real fun will begin soon once I formed the my organization and captured all of the tailed beast. MHM I think it's time to form the Akatsuki Madara said as he disappeared in a swirling vortex. At the bar. Kirijiri had successfully warped him and Shigaraki at the bar as the screen with all for one was already waiting for them to return. Master, you lied to me, All Might isn't weak, in fact, he is still as strong as he was before, on top of that. We lost the Namu Shigaraki said angrily as he looked towards All for One. Do not worry young Tamira, all for one assured his student, although we lost the Namu we still have gained an valuable amount of knowledge about the enemy, and you know what they say knowledge is power all for one said as he reassured his pupil he has grown weaker since our last battle, and it will only be a matter of time before he can no longer protect those around him. All for one turned around to look for Tobai, what about the villains you've recruited? Where's Tobai? All for one asked curious. Shigaraki scowled aside from being completely useless they were all captured, including he was cut off as a swirling vortex appeared and came out Tobai holding a slushy. Howdy, Tobai said as he waved at them after stepping out of the swirling vortex. Shigaraki turned towards him where the hell did you come from? He asked as he looked towards Tobai. Sorry Shigi Senpai, just had to stop and grab a slushy Tobai said as he took a sip from his slushy, sipping it loudly much to Shigaraki's annoyance. Al for one smiled seeing Tobai ah Tobai, it's good to see you at least you weren't captured like the rest of them all for one said as he was proud of his master. I'm just happy that I could be at service boss Tobai said as he bowed towards the screen before looking towards Shigaraki, so what do we do now Shigi Senpai? Tobai asked. For now, keep a low profile, I'll have Kirijiri send you a message if your next assignment if need be all for one said as Tobai nodded. You got it boss. 
Tobai said as he saluted all for one before disappearing in a swirling vortex. On count location. Madara jumped out off the swirling vortex as he entered to his hideout with Zetsu already waiting for him. How did it go master? How did it go boss? Zetsu asked. It went well Zetsu I have what I wanted Madara said as a swirling vortex appeared in his hands and it came out a small piece flesh that belonged to one Izumi Yagi. Flashback. Tobai put his hand in the vortex and pulled it back out as he was now holding a black metal rod as he spun the rod in his fingers before blurring away from them. Tobai suddenly rushed towards Izumi, as Izumi gasped in shock as she felt the black rod he was holding ripped through her stomach impaling her, but unknown to them Tobai grabbed a piece of flesh that belongs to Izumi before a small swirling vortex appeared as Tobai put the flesh into his pocket dimension present time. Soon I'll have the power of a god Madara said as he stared at the piece of flesh in his hands with a smirk on his face. Time skip. Madara had successfully surgically attached the flesh onto his body with the help of Zetsu as he waited, suddenly he felt pain in his body and eyes as he screamed in pain. Arg Madara screamed in pain as he resisted the urge to claw his eyes out just to ease the pain, as he endured unbearable pain he had never experienced in his life, even the pain that he felt when his cider and bully tormented doesn't even hold a candle to all the pain that he is experiencing right now him as his body was evolving atom by atom, cell by cell, molecular structure to molecular structure for him to awaken the Rinnegan, and the wood style as his eyes and body slowly began to change. Master Boss, Zetsu yelled as he ran up to help his master. After a minute, the pain subsided as Madra shakily got up with the help of Zetsu as his body and eyes still ache from the pain, Madara had his hand over his eyes as they tried to adjust to their new surroundings, as Madara faced the mirror as he slowly opened his eyes only to reveal purple eyes with ripple pattern on them, the legendary eyes of the Rinnegan, the eyes of a god. Madara stared at the mirror in both awe and amazement as he stared at the legendary eyes of the sage, he began to giggle then chuckle then going out of a full-blown maniacal laughter as he finally awakened his birthright. Madara quickly recomposed himself before turning towards Zetsu Zetsu, I want you to gather some bodies six to be exact, it's time this world knows the power of a god. It was a few minutes since what had happened in the USG as the students were currently outside with a police detective, while the villains were being lined up and were currently being escorted to the police station by a couple of police officers in the background. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 a detective said, as he counted all of the class 1A students everyone seems to be here that's good the detective said as he checked the list on the paper again to make sure. Hey Ojiro Hagakure said as she grabbed Ojiro's shoulder to get his attention. I heard that you were a really good fighter I had no idea you were so strong and I heard the you were able to spit that ball of lava I didn't know that you could do that Hagakure said with stars in her invisible eyes. I didn't know I was the only one of my own I survived using hit and run tactics and the lava part is my other quirk Ojiro said as he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly so where did you ended fighting Hagakure? Ojiro asked as he turned to the invisible girl in the class. The landslide zone Hagakure said excitedly I was with Todoroki and Yuraka you wouldn't believe how strong was his amazing and also Yuraka how he protected Yuraka like a knight in shining armor. It was so romantic, I totally shipped the two of them, Hagakur said before she gained a mischievous smile on her invisible face. Speaking of which I should probably tell Mina about this later on, she was saying something about finding new material, Hagakur muttered, and began to cackle to the possible new black male material on Yuraka much to Ajiro's confusion. You don't say well, I'm just glad that you didn't get hurt Ojiro Sadi, as he smiled towards he. I didn't even know she was there until she interrupted us Todoroki and Yuraraka thought with a sweat drop. Aren't you wondering about moi? Aoyama as he looked at the others his eyes were weirdly sparkling where was my sparkling life? He gestured his hand towards Kaminari, Kirishima, Koda and Takoyami only to be ignored by them as they were too busy talking with each other as Aoyama looked down to the ground dejected about being ignored. 
Interesting, so the people you fought were also low-level thugs and low-ranking villains, Takoyami said, as the others around him nodded. Kirishima palm his fist in a gesture, as he looked at the other, yeah, they messed with the wrong kids, huh? Kirishima said with a grin as the others nodded well, except for Kaminari. Yo, Kamibro, is something wrong? Kirishima asked, wondering why he was so quaint all of a sudden. Huh? Oh yeah, I'm fine, Kaminari said as he rubbed the back of his head low-level thugs, huh? Well, the guy me, Yayarazu, Jiro, Yagi, and the others fought was beyond thug level. He was just toying with us from the beginning, and when he got serious he completely destroyed Yagi and almost killed Asui we stood no chance Kaminari said as he still remembered Tobai's word about him being pathetic and how they were defeated so easily like he was just toying with them like it was all a big game for him. The others gasp in shock, no way he was really that strong. Kirishima asked in shock as an unknown villain completely destroyed one of their strongest members of their class and almost killed one their other female classmate to think a villain was that strong was terrifying for them. Kaminari nodded grimly, yeah it's true we stood no chance against him, and he completely destroyed us and he wasn't even going out like he was just playing with us for fun. But what's even worse is that he said that he was our age Kaminari said further shocking those around him once more. A teenager as a villain? I wonder what could have led him to this path? Takayami asked intrigued as the other started to wonder about it too. Did you miss me? Aoyama turned his attention to Siro, Shoji and Sato only to be ignored once again. All Might put that hole in the dome after all, huh? I figured Siro said as he smiled in awe at the hero man that guy is insane. We had that took some hardcore power Sato said as he looked at the others, it was so cool seeing him in action like that. Yeah it was crazy Shoji said as he nodded his head in agreement that bird monster looked really strong too and he still took it out like it was nothing. Where did you think I was? Ayama asked as he puts a hand on Suyu's shoulder. Um where? Suyu asked as she tilted her head to the side in confusion as Aoyama's eyes sparkle, and he flashed his arms flamboyantly. It's a secret Aoyama said as he flashed his arms in a flamboyant manner as sparkles can be seen around him. The class continued to chat with each other about the Esch attack, but Momo looked thoughtful currently lost in her own thoughts about what had happened earlier in the Asti. That guy? Tobai was it? He feels familiar for some reason and his eyes also look familiar like I've seen them from somewhere and why did he save me and looked relief when I was safe? And his quirks facing, some kind of illusion, fire breathing, some kind of skeleton quirk. His is it even possible to have so many quirks all at once? This doesn't add up. Just who are you? Momo thought to busy to notice Gyro who was calling her name. Momo yeah Momo you okay? Gyro asked worriedly waving her hand in her face as Momo snapped out from her thoughts, I have been calling your name for a few minutes now. Yeah, I'm fine Gyro and just lost in my own thoughts, that's all Momo said with a smile as she rubbed the back of her head in embarrassment as Gyro sighed in relief. Let's go ahead and get this students back to the main campus, the detective said as he returned from escorting the villains making sure that no villains escape, they've been through a lot, we don't need to interrogate them right away. Detective what about Aizawa sensei? Is he okay? Tsuyu asked as she hopped towards the detective. The detective sighed as he looked towards them and grabbed his phone and click a recording the bones in his arms were splintered he got facial fracturing fortunately. There doesn't seem to be any serious drain damage, but orbital floor has been almost completely destroyed he said as the students gasp in shock at the condition their teacher was in we have no way of knowing if his eyesight will be impaired once he's healed up. He stopped the reocketing as he looked at them while well, you heard the man he's currently in critical condition and the doctors are doing everything they can to save him he said as the others looked down in shock worried for their teacher's well-being. Sir what about 13? Mina asked in a concerned tone. The detective smiled as he looked at her. There's no need to worry there despite some pretty bad laceration to them, and All Might is also without serious injuries. 13 is currently recovering in the hospital. As we speak, he said as Izumi sighed in relief, knowing her father was safe. He's in the nurse's office right now. Recovery girl's power should be all treatments he needs. 
Ha thank goodness, the class muttered in relief that their teachers are going to be okay. Now let's get you back to class okay, the detective said as the class nodded in agreement. Fansa, the detective called to the cat-headed police officer, I still have some business in the nurse's office, I'll trust you to leave this to you okay, he said as the cat-headed police officer nodded his head in affirmative. Yes, sir, the cat-headed police officer said as he gave the detective a salute. Inside the Ustia, the principal, Midnight and Snipe can be seen overlooking the aftermath of the attack inside the Ustia as smoke was everywhere due to the attack. We need security improvements, the principal said as he looked at the carnage that the villains had caused, perhaps an entire system overhaul. I will ask Power Loader to upgrade our security system to make sure that this never happened again, the principal said as Midnight and Snipe nodded in agreement. Agreed, Snipe said. Warp quirks are very rare, Midnight said as she looked towards the principal and co-worker and can completely change the course of a battle, Midnight said as she looked at the central plaza of the Usja who was still smoking. It's frightening to know that a villain has such a power, Midnight said as the principal looked towards her. What about the other two that escape? Snipe asked as he turned towards the principal. Detective Tsukachi is currently investigating about the other two, the only thing we can do is wait for some kind of news he and HID police force might give us Nezu stated as both of the teachers nodded in understanding. Outside. The detective was about to enter his police car when he heard his name was called and looked towards a police officer who was running towards him. Tsukachi sir the officer said as he saluted in front Tsukachi turned his attention towards him and nodded for him to continue someone taught to be involved in this attack was just apprehended in a wooded area nearby sir the officer said as Tsukachi eyes widen as he looked towards him shock. Report Tsukachi said his expression was deadly serious making the police officer nervous. He has no apparent injuries and seems to be complying with the officer's command for now the officer said as Tsukachi look on in thought he hasn't said a word through we're not sure if he can actually speak. What are your orders sir the officer said as Tsukachi nodded in understanding before walking towards Nezu. Midnight and Snipe who recently just exited the Usji after examining the damage and taking notes on the security's improvement to prevent this from happening ever again. I would like to every inch of the school just to be safe, Tsukachi said, as he removed his Pandora and slightly bowing towards the principal asking for permission. Of course, the principal said excitedly, please do you'll have full access to the campus, we defiantly need your assistance on this matter, I don't care who makes a fuss, you have my blessing, the principal said, as he nodded in understanding. Thank you, Sir Tsukachi said as he put on his Pandora back in his head and bowing slightly again, then returning his attention to the rest of the police officers' teams proceed as planned. Yes, sir. The officers nodded their heads as they quickly returned to doing their work. You are entrance. The class were currently walking back to their classroom after being dropped off by the school bus as they were chatting with each other about the Usch incident and the villains that they had fought. Hey Yagi-chan, where are you going? Tsuyu asked seeing Izumi was about to run off. Uh, I have to go to the bathroom real quick Izumi said making a quick lie before running off to the nurse's office to see if her father was okay. U.S. Nurse's Office Well I guess I won't scold you for you being back here since it wasn't your fault recovery girl said to the bedridden Tashinori who was covered in bandages. I can't be sure yet but I think I shortened my time limit with that fight Tashinori aid in a raspy voice, at least I can still hold the form for an hour. Suddenly there heard loud footsteps coming towards them as they looked towards to see Izumi running with tears in her eyes worried for her father's safety. Dad, are you okay? Izumi ran over to her father's bedside to check if he was okay. Izumi, I'm fine, Toshinori said as he put on his signature smile to ease his daughter's worries. I just need a little rest, that's all. Well, there's no need to worry thing things happen, Toshinori said as he tries to get up Izumi, helping him get up to his back. Dad, I'm sorry, Izumi said as she looked down towards the ground. I have heard you talk about you shortening your time limit of one for all. I'm sorry, Izumi said as tears started to weld up her eyes as she looked down towards the ground as Tashinori puts his hand on her head. 
It wasn't your fault Izumi stop blaming yourself for something you had no control over it was my decision to fight that thing, and even if it means losing one for all to protect the only family I have left then I would do it in a heartbeat Tashinori said, as he gave her his signature smile to assure her that he was okay as Izumi moved forward and hugged her father tightly. The father-daughter scene was interrupted when Detective Tsukachi entered the nurse's office. Excuse me, Tsukachi said, as he removed his Pandora from his head. Hey, Toshi. Izumi, it's been a while, he said, as he smiled at his old friend. What the hell? I didn't know that you were investigating, Tashinori said, as he spit some blood in his mouth in shock. Ah, Tsukachi-san. Dad, is it really okay for Tsukachi-san to see you like this? Izumi asked shock and worried that her honorary uncle could find out about her father's secret. Oh yeah, it's fine your uncle Tsukachi knew that I was all might from the beginning Tashinori said as Tsukachi walks towards them Namast Tsukachi Tashinori greeted his old friend. Hey you two sorry if I'm disturbing something earlier, but we could really use any information you might have Tsukachi said as Tashinori interrupted him. Hold on. Before all of that tell me are the students are okay and Aizawa er eraser head and 13 Tashinori said in a worried tone. Tsukachi smiled at him and shook his head their fine Toshi, they just had some scrapes and bruises and Aizawa and 13 are in stable condition right now relax he said as Tashinori and Izumi both sighed in relief knowing that their students classmates were okay and that their teacher sko worker are now in stable condition. Ah that's good to hear Tashinori said thankful that everyone was safe. If you heroes hadn't risked your lives that students would have never made it, Tsukachi said, as he continued what he was about to say earlier, you three saved that entire class of kids today. Tashinori frowned and turned towards him, you're not seeing the whole picture, Tsukachi, he said gaining Tsukachi's attention, those students also risked their lives, they fought as hard as us. Izumi smiled towards her father, thank you dad, she said as she smiled at him softly. I don't think there's ever been a group of first years who experienced a real fight like this so early in their training Tashinori continued not only did they survived, but they also learned what it means to be a pro those villains made a mistake attacking them this class is strong they're filled with courage and drive Tashinori said as Tsukachi and recovery girl smiled towards him. Mark my words, they'll become great heroes someday Tashinori said as Izumi smiled and clenched her fist in determination. Yeah, I'll become a hero for you Ani-chan, I promise Izumi thought as she smiled and looked towards the sun in determination. After the what happened at the Usage attack the school had decided it was best for the students to recover for their physical or mental injuries as some of them were still shaken up by the event, so the school thought it would be best to cancel the school and give the students a week break so that Aizawa, 13 All Might and the students can recover. Unknown Location Madara appeared in a swirling vortex in his base of operations for his new organization as he was overlooking it deep in thought. I need to gather more members quickly maybe I can ask all for one, if he has someone he can lend me Madara thought the sooner I can gather the members of my organization, the sooner we can capture those tailed beasts. Madara was currently in a hollowed out cave as he was overlooking the new base of operations for his new organization. Madara went in some hand signs before exclaiming summoning Jutsu. Jido Mazo. He yelled as ink started to appear on he ground and smoke started to emit from it. And with that smoke started to fill the area, and when the smoke cleared Madara gave a sinister smile. In front of him was a gigantic ten-eyed monster statue that looked like it was buried from the waist down with chains around its arm, it was the Jido Mazo the husk of the ten tails. It's magnificent, Madara said, as he stared at the statue, it's truly magnificent. Madara smiled as he stared at the statue with awe, truly, it is beautiful, wouldn't you agree, Zetsu? Madara looked to the corner of his eye to see Zetsu emerging from the ground. Yes, it is Master Look's kinda creepy boss, Zetsu said in agreement disagreement. Madara suppressed a smile at the white Zetsu's words before asking him his question, did you did what I had asked of you, Zetsu? Yes master yes boss Zetsu said we have brought you the bodies that you needed Zetsu said in unison. Excellent, well done Zetsu Madara said as he smirked, and with this I'll accomplish my dream. 
Soon I can finally start my plan. The Infinite Tsukayomi. So that concludes our third part of our series. Stay tuned for the fourth part of the series. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.